Very good morning. I am Shilpa welcoming you all to the NCERT live phone in program. Our today's topic of discussion is stay safe online. To discuss further we have Mr. I. L. Narsimha Rao in the studio. Designated as a project manager at Center for Development of Advanced Computing, Hyderabad. Thank you Mr. Rao for joining in today. So let's proceed to understand the cyber world and how to be safe in that. So Mr. Rao, if may I ask, uh, when we say being online, what does that mean? Okay, basically when we connect to a computer, right, we don't say that we are online. But once our computer is connected to the internet, then we call it as that we are online. So if we take such an example, when we want to browse for some information, we say that we have to connect to the internet so that we can able to access the information. Then when we talk about shopping, online shopping, once we get connected to the internet, then we are able to access the resources and we are able to shop online. So the basic feeling of online means that we are connected to the internet and we are connected to the outside world. Okay, that's pretty simple. Uh, so, Mr. Rao, uh, like online world is so vast and there are so many users including students, teachers and several other people. So, what could be the possible threat okay. if we could categorize? See, basically when we talk about uh, an online threat, the online threat is basically when it, when without our intention or involvement, there is a possibility of an attack on the resources that we have. So if I categorize them, we say that the security has to be there for your system first. After, to the, after the system, it should be for your access to your system and while on the, while, while on the internet. So basically when you talk about threat to your systems, right, your desktop or laptop or your uh, let us say nowadays we are talking on mobile because mobile is being used as a simple yes. uh, single computer. So we talk about different threats like we, we can there is an attack may happen through different kind of viruses, worms, trojans. Then we also have different types of malware. Malware mm -hmm. is nothing but malicious software. Okay. A software which is created to harm our computer resource. We call it as a malicious run, right? So we have different malwares and while we are accessing something, there may be some phishing attacks that may happen. So basically when we talk about threat to your system, we have created a, a poster which uh, the <coughs> viewers can see that. There are different guidelines which can be used for protecting your system. The first one is your antivirus solution, right? To avoid such kind of a virus attacks or trojans attacks, it is always better we have a very good antivirus solution fixed to your, uh, in your computer and it should be updated on a regular basis. Then whenever you are downloading anything, you have to first scan those particular downloads and then you should be able to download it onto your system so that your system is safe. Then maintain some strong passwords so that your system is not compromised. Oh, then we talk about uh, clicking the links, right? We have mm -hmm. get different, different kinds of links that are there. So we should be very careful when we are clicking certain links on certain websites or any applications so that there may be some malicious content which may be downloaded on it. And you should be very suspicious about the other uh, means like through emails there is a possibility of an attack, through, uh, through accessing the websites also there is a possibility of attack. So after the computer system, right, we have to look at the internet uh, activity. So once you are connected to the internet, right, where students and teachers try to browse a lot of information mm -hmm. from the internet for education right. purpose. When they are browsing the internet, they should always look at what browsers they are using. Are the browsers safe in the default mode? Because basically any browser that we are using to access the internet, you should be very careful with respect to the settings of the browser. The settings of the browser should be taken care of where we have to disable the cookies, right? We have to see that the browser is up to date, the latest version of the browser has to be used. Basically what happens is many of the people don't think that a browser made a <coughs> old one, uh, this is the old one, so let me continue with it. No, because the latest version of the browser has to be loaded onto your system so that it will also stop 
some kind of a, a malware entering into your system. Then it is always better the children and the teachers should ha set the browser settings in such a way that there is a safe browsing option that is available to us. So that safe browsing should be enabled so that some kind of a filtering mechanism is provided by the browser to us. So like that we should be able to look at the safety and security of both our system as well as the information that we are going to access and there is a small small tips that you have to follow by which you will be able to be safe online. Okay, that is uh, actually such a useful information which Mr. Rao has given us. Uh, uh, Mr. Rao like lot of the people are on social media, they are like using it regularly maybe to gather some information and maybe to connect to few other people. Yes. So, what sort of safety precaution a person should take on social media? <coughs> okay. Um, basically, whenever we use internet, we use it for communication purpose, right. right? And we also use for educational purpose. When it comes to communication purpose, a one-to-one -one communication may be through your email, right? So, let me talk about the email security yeah. first because uh, we, we are having a free email access given by different providers and we start creating as many number of email IDs and start communicating with others. But please remember that the email that you have created will have a user ID and password like right. your email ID and the password. The password should always be strong because there is a possibility that a attack can happen on your uh, email uh, ID. <coughs> the next one that we look at is your uh, communication that you done through email. So basically through email also there is a possibility of an attacks. How a phishing attack may happen? A phishing is nothing but creating a duplicate website which is very much similar like a original website, right? By which a person is uh, routed to that particular uh, website, phishing website. So and most of the attacks will happen through email by providing a link in that. Mm -hmm. So never, never click the link that is being given to you through the email. Always try to copy the link and check in the browser by typing the URL properly so that your browser will also filter out whether it is a fake one or mm -hmm. a original one. And once uh, the email security, whenever you are downloading anything from your email, try to scan it properly. So these are some simple, simple uh, tips that you have to follow. Basically, when we talk about the email security, we have created a, a very good tips like always use some strong passwords for that, never send some sensitive information like passwords or credit or debit card details or your banking details through email, never click on the web links that are provided through email, delete those particular chain mails that you get because 99 percent of the emails that you get are spam mails, right. unwanted email. So what we have to do is we have to keep on removing those particular spams and you also have some fam, spam filtering softwares embedded within your email client. So you have to just use those particular options and try to avoid filling up the forms that are given through email links and all because these forms through these forms your identity theft may happen. Identity right. theft is nothing but collecting that information with or without your knowledge and using mm -hmm. it against you. So these are some of the tips. Now coming to the social networking, yes, definitely we have found that social networking is being widely used both in the educational, uh, for the educational purpose as well as for the personal purpose. And you have this many number of users and millions and millions of users are connected to that. Basically when we talk about the social networking, we, we are having a group of friends. We try to connect to other group of friends. but the main question that arises is, are we talking to the right person? Do we know the person to whom we are talking to or interacting with? So we always suggest that in social networking, you should never share your passwords, the first thing, with any of your friends because uh, basically what happens once your passport is compromised, all your data that is there in your social networking sites are compromised. So you should be very careful with that. The second thing that I would like to suggest to all the children is that never share your photographs, right, on the social media and never share it with unknown people. That's the most important thing. You can share it to your close friend whom you know really in the physical life. Mm -hmm. But if you are sharing your photographs with unknown persons, it may be used it in a wrong way. So other thing that we always say is that never try to meet those particular uh, strangers right 
physically right. without informing your parents at all. And this social networking media is also a boon where we are able to share our thoughts, we are able to share our ideas, we are sh and we are able to prepare our assignments or prepare some papers and lot of communication, positive things are there. Apart from that, we have some kind of a predators who are ready on the internet, who are trying to ga gather that information and try to attack certain persons which should be avoided. So social media is an excellent platform for sharing uh, and getting the knowledge. But at the same time, we should be cautious about the other side of the social media by which the children and all the people are safe online. Okay, Mr. Rao. So, we all are actually using social media and we are the user of it. Uh, so, if may I ask Mr. Rao, yeah. uh, like we all are uh, into online sphere. So, what sort of classroom activities we can actually conduct at the school? Uh, as you have <coughs> just talked about what sort of uh, browsing method we should use to be safe online and the email. Yes. So, even you have talked about the threats. So, what sort of classroom activities we can actually conduct at the school or maybe at some other teaching institutes yes. so that the student get to know about yeah. it? Let me show you a poster on browser security. So, this particular uh, poster which is created on browser security, you can see some of the tips, right? What are the best practices and guidelines that can be there? So, uh, the, we are from the government of India where we have created a website called as infosecawareness.in. Right. So, this is a, uh, one small activity that can be planned in the school is with respect to asking the children to visit our website, collect certain information with respect to any particular topic of safety and security and then try to emulate it in the class in the form of a small skit. It can be a one minute, two minute skit or it can be a poster presentation, it can be a, a painting competition that can be conducted or a slogan preparation contest. And why is that, why we always talk about this is that, as you know from the childhood, prevention is better than cure. cure right. So, it is always better we have some kind of a preventive mechanisms, right, and the security should be there in the minds of the uh, young, minds, young minds, that when they are accessing anything, they have to look at from the security angle, what to do, what not to do. So, they can frame up their mind, small activities like uh, poster presentations can be done, um, uh, collecting that information from infosec awareness dot in the website, the government website about some safety on different topics, have a uh, what you call display it in the, your classroom, have a small skit created and the national painting competitions which are there on cyber security can also be, uh, they can participate and apart from that, the main idea is the YouTube channel like this. Okay. We have a lot of uh, videos and all that have been created to sensitize the public. They can be shown in the in the classroom to sensitize the children. At least one one simple video a day, right? And that video is not more than three minutes. So definitely, it will help the children to think on those security lines by which they can always be safe online. So, uh, Mr. Rao has actually shared a very important information that you can actually browse through the InfoSec Security. Am I right, Infosec Mr. Rao? InfoSecAwareness.in. InfoSec, uh, sorry? InfoSecAwareness.in. It's a website. So, Mr. Rao, if you could uh, demonstrate us a bit about it. Yeah. Uh, we have the InfoSecAwareness.in website. Okay. You can just go to the any browser and once you are connecting to infosecawareness.in. This is the website. As you know, whenever any kind of a challenge is uh, mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. we always keep a advisory on this, like the, the recent challenge which are there. And we also conduct the national level painting competition. So, we have different categories over here. We have children, we have students, we have family, we have women, different categories. And once you go to the children category, you are going to have the introductory part and also the tips with respect to what are the different uh, uh, guideline topics, what are the different risks that may be through the different options like email, we are talking about it, browser, passwords, identity theft, how it happens and what are the different security concepts that you can have. And for the children as well as for the teachers, right, for the classroom activity, you can just go to the multimedia material option. 
from mm -hmm. there you can just go to the download section mm -hmm. and you can see that we have awareness videos infosec minimals tip videos are there alerts annual magazines browsers cartoon stories for the small children mm -hmm. which can be explained posters presentation stickers so if you want to go to the awareness video just click the awareness video and you have lot of sections go to the isca section over there and you have these many videos which are readily available which can be shown to the children and this helps them to understand the uh, basics of the security and all so you can see the internet safety uh, for the children automatically the particular 2 minutes video 1 minute video will be there okay. what are the different uh, tips that you can follow in a simple way don't give you out your personal information and so on and apart from this we also have the posters if you can see here the multimedia downloads then you have posters whatever the new posters that we create we keep on adding it into this and you can see that the different ISCA posters around 70 posters have been already created all the uh, teachers can download or the students can download it so, and put it as it is in the school for sensitizing the public this is a poster that we have created on the cyber bullying okay. which can be directly used so all the resources are available any teacher who would like to sensitize the children on the cyber security can visit our infosecawareness.in because it's a government website right. maintained by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and try to use this particular content to sensitizing the public, sensitizing the students and that's how we can create a safe and cyber secure aware students right. and society. Uh, so Mr. Rao, uh, what we are seeing nowadays that the information get leaked. Hmm. Uh, like more, most frequently we are just seeing it maybe on any social media platform just seeing it on news yes. that the information get leaked so what sort of information a person shouldn't share online okay basically when we talk about uh, accessing the getting the information of any others suppose let us say uh, I am a hacker yeah. I want to get some information about a particular person what I do is I use some kind called a social engineering methods the social engineering methods are nothing but just using a search engine and trying to collect all that information that is placed about a particular person on different websites and relating to that we will be able to create a profile of that particular person and try to attack it. Mm -hmm. So in these days we should always be very careful what we are posting online. Basically what we always suggest for the children is that you should never post everything on the internet. right? You may be having a very good uh, opinion that yes, we are trying to share with our friends, but there are many others who are not friends online. Right. So you should be very careful while you are posting online and you should be very careful while you are filling up any forms. Suddenly what happens is you get a small email that you are, getting, you are the winner of a lottery or you are the winner of an iPhone and children what, what happens is they just tend to, okay, yes. uh, I will not they lose anything, no, let me just click that link and fill up the form and send it. And in that form, they'll ask you everything, including your address, your name, and all. So never, never share such information. Never fill up the forms unnecessarily. Try to be very, very, uh, uh, what we, we always say, stop while, up, while you're filling up the form. Think whether we require this information or not to be posted. And then you have to look at response, whether we have to respond to that or not, right? The other thing in social media, we always avoid, try to avoid sharing of photographs because these days we have seen the different ty type of crimes which are happening where the sharing of, inform sharing of photographs should be avoided, sharing of videos should be avoided. Mm -hmm. Next, you should be very particular and check up the security settings of your any account that is there, whether it's a social media or any other. And just to check whether you have all the privacy settings filled up properly or not, privacy settings set properly or not, because every application comes with a predefined security tools and filters. You have to see that they are connected, mm -hmm. they are used, right? For example, in your instant messaging, right, you have always one thing called as do share my photograph or right. display picture only mm -hmm. to my friends or to my known contacts. In the same way, there are many other options which are available where you have to use that, always have a licensed operating system always have an antivirus to your system, always have the internet facility, malware protection, then 
you should talk about browser security, mm -hmm. applying the browser security, then you have to talk about accessing the those websites which are authentic, which are not authentic. Basically what happens is when you are accessing a particular website, sometimes the spelling of the URL will be wrong. You should be very, very uh, careful while checking the spelling of the website names. Basically what happens is suppose let us say I am taking an example NCERT, right. There may be a small mis uh, spelling mistake or spell it like N -E -N -E -C -E -R -T. Right. We may think that it is the authentic one. So, mm -hmm. such kind of phishing attacks may also happen. So, you have to check the URL properly whether it is a secured website or not and then try to access it. Any secured website will be having HTTPS mm -hmm. in the beginning of the URL. As you can see in the screen, we have this infosecawareness.in which is having a HTTPS. There is a small lock symbol, right? And once you click this lock symbol, you are going to f find out what is the certificate, mm -hmm. who has given it and what is the durability or the validity of the certificate. So these are the simple things you can go through and lot of information is available, okay. right. And how to get all that information? Just visit our infosecawareness.in where you are going to get lot of information with respect to that. You can see here we have the infosec concepts for the ch teachers who would like to uh, go through and understand the different concepts like how Wi-Fi security happen, what is Wi-Fi security, what is when the phishing attacks that are there, right, what are the different tools that you can use for your operating system. So we have lot of uh, information that has been provided over here for the teachers as well as the students for educational purpose and you can use it freely as it is, play the videos. And we also have the presentations for your uh, kind information. We have also have these presentations being uh, over there. You can use the presentations, right? Show it to the students and make them aware. Okay. We can be safe online anytime. And whenever any new aspects are coming up, like there was a deadly game called Mamo Challenge Mamo Game, Challenge, which is there. Right. And we have given a, uh, what you call, a advisory, which is there. And it is from the ministry where they have reference to this. So, altogether, our intention is that we should create a safe and secure society, right. cyber aware society. So, please just get the free information from the infosecawareness.in. And one more question I have in my mind, yes, Mr. Anything. Rao, and which is we interact to a lot of people online, maybe through the social media or maybe through the forums. So, what sort of precaution one has to take while interacting with the strangers? Well, these days I, I would put it the other way around. Now, these days we are talking about internet, uh, not internet addiction, texting addiction right. being increased, right? So, basically what we say is that we have to limit ourselves whenever we are on this particular online forums. The reason behind is we don't know uh, how many with, with how many people will be start chatting with, interacting with and there is a possibility of some kind of a... Um, uh, for the children especially there is some kind of a cyber bullying that is happening right which has to be avoided. So we always suggest that whenever you are online and connecting to such kind of a uh, what you call social media right. you should always have a limited time period for you to access it and come out of it and in the limited uh, period you should always look at with a priority like with whom I have to interact and complete my chat rather than continuously chatting and wasting our time over mm -hmm. that. The other thing that you have to look at is uh, if somebody is trying to, uh, let us say, uh, put a derogatory messages and all, try to come out of it, try to avoid chatting with them and if you, uh, if you, uh, the children has to report immediately to their parents and all. So there are simple, simple tips that we always suggest that never chat with any stranger, right, until unless you have, you know the stranger physically, don't chat with him, that's a one big uh, uh, what you call advice that we generally mm -hmm. give to the children and for the educational purpose yes you have different forums different forums where you can share your thoughts you can share your ideas you can uh, have some blogs created for yourself but while creating the blogs and sharing the content on the blog also you should be very careful with respect to what you are posting what you are not post uh, what, what which has to be reframed from posting like for example you should not make any derogatory statements and other things and you have to follow the internet ethics where the ethics uh, is also available on the website. So, what I personally feel is that uh, to be safe, right, we should always have uh, some rules framed. Once you have a rules framed for yourself, right, automatically don't try to uh, over 
go by this rule. So, automatically what happens is you will always be safe, right? And always chat with only the known people, try to avoid uh, derogatory messages or mm -hmm. anything like that that can be sent and be, 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 uh, be very vigilant, right? Because internet is having other kind of things because it can be used for positive as well as negative. There are a lot of attacks that are happening to mm -hmm. different predators and all. We should be very careful. And there are several cases which has happened in the recent past since this is not the forum to discuss about it. But I would suggest that the teachers have to take them as a case studies, right? Uh, based upon the newspaper reports and all, they can take it as one some case study and discuss in the classroom. Sensitize them, right? Such things have happened. You should be very careful with it. And they can refer to the tips that are available on our website. So, these are some of the mechanisms by which you can always be safe and uh, the cyber security or the cyber attacks are going to uh, are going to change, manifest in different ways. It is not that we have 1 to 10 and these are the only limitations. It keeps on changing. So, in the education, through education purpose, we should be very, very careful while understanding the kind of the latest threats which are happening and after knowing the latest threat, what are the mitigations, how to uh, solve it, how, what are the do's and don'ts that are, can be done. And for the educational purposes, right, we have the master trainer program also being conducted. So, the teachers can also participate in the master trainer program by which they get to know many things about the cyber security and they can become master trainers where they can go back to their school and also conduct such kind of awareness programs for sensitizing the children. Okay, so what's the criteria to get into that program? Right. We are already associated with NCRT. They can uh, uh, directly contact us and we have uh, association with the boards now, the CBSE and Kendri Vidya and all the boards. They can just uh, uh, connect to us, isca at cdac.in is the okay. email ID where you can connect to us and we also have a toll free number uh, to which the students and the teachers can ask the questions to our experts. And the toll free number is, I show you on the screen, it is uh, in the poster 1-800-425-6235. So, this is the uh, toll free number 1-800-425-6235 where you can make a call to us and our experts are going to answer your queries, whatever that is there with respect to the information security. So, Mr. Rao, the participants who are going to be in the program, uh, so will they be getting any certificates for that? Uh, yes. The master trainer program is planned for the three days program and in the three days a teacher, a computer science teacher from a particular school can join. So, we have a group of around 60 to 100 teachers who are uh, gathered together and we teach them how to be the first responder, right? And once they are the first responders, they can take care of the things with respect to any kind of an allegations or anything that comes to the school. And apart from that, what we say that they are given that kind of requisite knowledge in those three days plus another two days for the virtual training where we have a make shikshak platform from where they can get that information. And with this uh, five days training and an evaluation after that, they are going to get a certificate from ISCA, Government of India, so that they can be a master trainer and conduct any programs anywhere. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Rao, one more question yeah. I want to ask you. And the question is that we tend to download a lot of things online, right? Yes. yes. And mo most of the time the teenagers and the students tend to download from the unknown sources. So, is it safe to download from any source? Uh, basically, what happens is when, wh why do we require that? You have to look at the why do I require this document, right? Sometimes the name of the document and the content of the document will be completely different. We are searching for something, we may get something else. Right. So, what I always suggest is that whenever you are searching for a particular information specific to that, you always go to the safe search option of your browser. Once you go to the safe search option of your browser, automatically that unwanted applications or the unwanted websites from where you don't require anything will be filtered out. Okay. Basically what happens is whenever you are browsing, you just type something and you are going to get some lakhs and lakhs of pages. Right? How, how, how do you know that which one is the right uh, page where you are going to get the right information? So, once you have the safe search, almost 50 percent of the unnecessary pages are removed and automatically once you connect to that, right, uh, give that in the double quotes, the different search techniques are available and advanced search can also be used. 
Once you give the advanced search, automatically you are going to get the right information from the right websites and you can click that but you have to also verify while downloading whether you have a proper antivirus solution in your system or not. Okay. Because while uh, downloading that information, you should also check whether it is having containing any malware or not, right. So, these are the simple mechanisms. There are lot to discuss. Please visit our infosecawareness.in website for a lot of information. I know many queries will be there for the uh, viewers. They can call us on our toll free number 1-800-0425-6235 so that they can get lot of information and let us create a safe cyber aware society. So today we have gained a lot of information about online sphere and how to be safe in that. And particularly I want to say that I hope this information will help you to tackle to not to be a victim online. Thank you Mr. Rao for sharing such useful and practical information with us. Thank you very much. And if you have any query or any question if you may want to ask then you can dial into our toll free number or can drop an email to us. Till then take care and keep watching Kishore Manch.